Well, today with me is a special guest. She is the first female president of any Pacific island, but she has a lot on her plate, including a challenge, the challenge of climate change. With me is the president of Marshall Islands, Hilda Haini. Ma'am, welcome to Vion. Uh, my first question is on your ties with India, your country's ties with India. How do you characterize the ties? What do you see in the relationship? Uh, thank you very much. That's a very good question. Um, I, I would characterize the relationship with uh, your country, with India, as a developing uh, partnership. Uh, India, of course, is a very important, one of the, uh, if not the largest democracy in the world, and a world power when it comes to uh, the United Nations uh, system. Uh, it's also a, a, a country that is beginning to develop relations with the Pacific Island uh, countries, uh, one of the uh, post-forum dialogue countries that uh, is very important to Pacific Island countries. Uh, we see uh, India itself as uh, another developing countries that understand issues of a developing country like the Marshall Islands. We've uh, been fortunate to, uh, to develop and to work with uh, India on many uh, areas of uh, importance to the Marshall Islands uh, on solar uh, energy, on disaster risk reduction, uh, early warning system. Uh, we've had uh, uh, grassroots uh, projects that support development at the community level, and that's very important to us. So uh, we're looking to India to strengthen our relationship with, uh, with, uh, with your country. Mm -hmm. Thank you. India is playing a vital role uh, uh, when it comes to its role in the Pacific Islands. Indian Prime Minister also visited the Pacific Island uh, countries uh, and uh, we have seen that cooperation also starting that summit between the Pacific Island countries and India. How do you see that cooperation uh, coming or continuing? Uh, well, uh, I think we're very encouraged with, uh, with the presence and with the, uh, with the partnerships that have developed uh, between India and uh, each of the Pacific Island countries. As you mentioned, uh, the Prime Minister uh, visited the Pacific Island uh, countries in uh, 2014 and had a meeting in Fiji with all the Pacific leaders and also invited our Pacific leaders to come to, uh, to India and uh, met with, uh, with him. Uh, that was a, a highlight for some of our leaders. Uh, people continue to talk about uh, how uh, amazing they were to see all the development in India. And so uh, I think this is, uh, this is very important and uh, one area that we want to continue to promote uh, for Pacific Island development. Uh, and I believe India is also providing a lot of help to your country in various forms, especially solar? Uh, yes, uh, in fact, uh, the, the uh, Solar Alliance uh, partnership is one, one uh, such initiative that is being promoted by India. Almost all of the Pacific Island countries have uh, uh, joined that uh, alliance and uh, it's an area that uh, we see uh, India helping us. Uh, technology uh, is another area that uh, I think uh, India can assist us. Uh, um, we've also seen uh, other, uh, other areas uh, in education, for example. Uh, in the Marshall Islands, uh, for example, uh, we're beginning to look at uh, developing the yoga curriculum in our schools and we look forward to having India helping us to get that curriculum developed as uh, uh, important uh, aspect of our uh, mental and physical uh, development for our children. Uh, we also have International Yoga Day. Do you do yoga? I mean, is it popular in your country? Well, it's not, uh, it's something that I think will be introduced. It's not something that's part of our culture but it's one that uh, people are interested in developing. Interesting, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, let's talk about the biggest challenge you are facing and perhaps the world is also facing the issue of climate change. You're a small country and um, in the middle of uh, Pacific Ocean and it's threatened by climate change. What would you like to say to the world, send a message so that this issue, uh, there is a consensus on this issue? Well, there is consensus that, uh, that if we don't, um, uh, if we don't, um, reduce our emissions, uh, that countries like the Marshall Islands, which uh, you know is uh, an atoll country, we're only two meters above uh, sea level on everywhere in my country. There is no retreat, there is nowhere to go if, uh, if the sea level rise. So it's, it's a very 
uh, important and existential threat for the, for the Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. So we're very concerned about the reports that are coming out. Uh, we understand the IPCC report is coming out next month. It's going to tell us that the, uh, uh, the sea level rise and is going to uh, increase than what uh, was expected. Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, um, um, it's, uh, it's important that countries, especially big emitters, uh, big uh, countries that emit uh, uh, green, greenhouse gas emission, mm -hmm. that they try to control their, uh, their emission. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this week, uh, we're, um, we're launching our um, uh, 2050 strategy in line with Paris Agreement that tell us how we're going to move towards net zero emissions. And this is uh, an area that we're promoting and asking other countries to also uh, reduce their emission, uh, developing their plan in line with the Paris Agreement so that uh, 1.5 degree is, uh, is, uh, is, is kept as, uh, as promised in the, uh, in the um, Paris Agreement. But ma'am, on Paris Agreement itself, we have seen what the situation has developed, uh, uh, the consensus missing somewhere, and, and uh, one of the largest em em emitters of, uh, of pollution uh, uh, not being part of it. Does that worry you? It does worry us, and we're very discouraged uh, by any country uh, stepping out of the uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, it's very important that uh, everyone uh, continues to... Uh, to uh, keep their um, promises uh, to the Paris Agreement. So, mm -hmm. of course, we're very uh, disappointed that uh, one of the big emitters is uh, talking about stepping out or uh, working on uh, stepping out, and we hope that uh, other countries will not follow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a critical issue for, for countries like the Marshall Islands. India has a policy of common but differentiated responsibility on climate change, but India has also policies such as the Solar Alliance, uh, uh, which has a positive impact. How do you see India's policy on the issue of climate change? Well, uh, we would encourage India also, as a big emitter, to do what it can to support the Paris Agreement. Uh, that's all we can do, you know. I think every country has their own uh, constraints, and uh, while we try to understand the constraints, it's also important uh, that everyone step up mm -hmm. and uh, try to do the best they can to, to meet the uh, uh, the requirements of uh, Paris Agreement. Do you think that it's time that there are some reforms in this global institution? Because what this current global institution represents is a world of 1940s, and we are here in 19 uh, in, in 2018. Well, like any other organization, uh, UN uh, is due for reform. Uh, if you if you know if if it's an organization that's been uh, the same for many many years, obviously they have to uh, look towards uh, uh, reform so that they can uh, meet the current situation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many more countries that are uh, now a member of the United, Sta United Nations. How are they being responded to? There are different categories of countries. Uh, how are they participating in the, in the United Nations setup? So I, I think it's important for United Nations to look at itself and see where uh, it can uh, do better. Do you support India's membership at the UNSC? Well, yes, I'm, uh, um, I know that we've been supporting uh, both uh, Japan and India's uh, uh, desire to be on the uh, United Nations uh, Security Council. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it's time that uh, those uh, uh, countries are, uh, are uh, mm -hmm. welcome into the, uh, into the family of this uh, Security Council. You are a women leader. Uh, there are very few women leaders on, on, on this planet. I mean, I, I can just recall Germany, New Zealand, and I think uh, other can Iceland as well. Uh, what message you would like to give to other, uh, uh, other world leaders uh, uh, about your role as, as a woman leader, the women leader's role in, in this uh, group of... Uh, uh, when you are in a uh, when you are in a meeting, whether you in uh, in, in in the UNSC or maybe uh, UNGA, you have seen more men and less of women. What do you like to say on that? Well, obviously, uh, you know, fifty percent of the world population is made up of women, and so it's important for that uh, fifty percent to be well represented in uh, leadership position. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also important for uh, young, you know, the younger generation, the young women, uh, to see 
that they themselves can uh, take part in decision making at the you know at every level, mm -hmm. not just uh, you know lower level, but all the way up to the you know to leaders of countries. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I think there are less than 25 of uh, us women uh, leader mm -hmm. in uh, you know around the world, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's a sad uh, situation when you talk about the. Uh, the uh, percentage of women uh, in the in, in the world population. So it's important for uh, for countries to uh, to empower women mm -hmm. to take their seat in uh, decision making uh, mm -hmm. uh, platforms and um, and uh, decision making table. Uh, Ma'am, you're the first woman uh, president of any Pacific island. Uh, what challenges did you face? Well, uh, I think the biggest challenge is to, to try to do the best uh, I can as the first uh, women Pacific uh, leader. Uh, it's a big responsibility. I think uh, it's important for, for us, uh, few women in a uh, position of uh, leadership, to show that uh, women can lead, that they can be responsible, that they can take their job seriously, and, uh, you know, and that uh, they bring uh, a good, uh, different perspective to uh, to leadership, and I, I think this is important that people recognize uh, that they can do the job as well. How do you see today's world? Because we have seen in today's world there are cracks when it comes to multilateralism uh, in global bodies. Well, I think there are benefits for both uh, bilateral uh, relations and uh, multilateralism as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important for uh, the world to strike a balance. I, I don't think that we should just go one way or the other, mm -hmm. but that that we benefit, especially small countries like ours, we benefit from multilateralism mm -hmm. uh, in many ways, and uh, it's important to to highlight that as well. Yours is a small country, and there are so many small countries. How do you, uh, what would you like to say about the power of a small country in the current uh, uh, current world order in which we have seen a lot of other world big powers having their own uh, 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 rules of the game. So what are the role, what are the positive uh, impact uh, the small countries can play when it comes to world uh, politics and world order? Uh, well, I, I think even uh, even though, for example, Marshall Islands is small, uh, I, it's important for us to uh, to to exert our moral leadership. Uh, when we speak about climate change, mm -hmm. we're speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we bring uh, that experience to to the to you know to our uh, action and to the way we lead in the in in the discussion around climate change internationally, um, and so. Uh, our experience, even though it's uh, it's of a smaller number of people, mm -hmm. it's just as important. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, for bigger countries, uh, it's important for them to uh, to realize that small countries have uh, have a lot to contribute to the world as well. It's something that comes out of today's world order, which uh, which has seen a lot of countries uh, trying to engage with other countries, but through other ways, something that goes against the normal world order? Well, there is, uh, yes, there is, uh, there is competition in our part of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, as you know, uh, for a long time, the countries that have been, uh, the big countries in the Pacific regions have been the United States, Japan, Australia, and, um, and now there are uh, interests by other you know, developing countries, developed countries to come into the Pacific region. Mm -hmm. And so there is, a, it's really a, a, a power competition between these big, big countries. Mm -hmm. But I think for us in, you know, in the Pacific, uh, we'd like to know what that would mean for us. Mm -hmm. How Do would that, that affect our lives? Do you think that will have a detrimental impact in the region? Well, it depends on who's there and uh, what their intentions are. And so I think for us, we're very careful. We want to see what the, you know, what the intentions are and uh, what what their presence would be would mean to us in the. Do, do you doubt uh, the presence of certain countries? I don't know about uh, doubt. But I want to make sure that whoever is in the Pacific region that they follow the rule of law, and that uh, you know that they respect the the uh, wishes 
of the small island countries in the Pacific. That, that's an important line because that's something um, India has also been stating a rule of law, especially in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, this new concept is coming, Indo-Pacific. Uh, you must have heard it many times now. What do you have to say about this concept? Because uh, it seems this new construct is... Uh, is, 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 is going to make a new world order, a world order which believes in rule of law? Well, we've, uh, we've been presented with this uh, Indo-Pacific strategy uh, by both Japan, United States, Australia, and, uh, you know, these are uh, friends of the Pacific. And so for the most part, uh, although the, uh, the concept is not fully uh, developed and fully explained, uh, most of the Pacific Island countries are, are on board with the, uh, the concept of uh, Indo-Pacific, mm -hmm. uh, looking at it from uh, the, uh, the belief that uh, it's centered on the rule of law. Mm -hmm. So this is very important to us. How do you think about the various uh, quadrilaterals and trilaterals that are emerging in the region? I mean, we have the quadrilateral, uh, the plans to have a quadrilateral, they have trilateral meetings between um, uh, Australia, India and Japan and between US, uh, Japan and Australia. Do you think that serves the pur purpose of secure, providing security in the region, especially the Pacific Island countries? Well, we'd like to think that they're, they have the interest of the Pacific Islands at heart. That's the most important thing to us. I mean, I'm sure they have their own reason for their presence in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. But for us, uh, our security and our way of life mm -hmm. uh, and the rule of law is what's important to us. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that these uh, presence or these countries can uh, enhance those uh, for us, that's important. And how do you see the new, new plans of connectivity? India has its own connectivity plans. China has its own connectivity plans. How do you think uh, these connectivity plans are bringing the world together or maybe sometimes not bringing the world together and making the world uh, go in different way? Connectivity, telecom connectivity, is that what you're talking about? Whether or physical what connectivity, whether it's digital connectivity, China has its own uh, One Belt, One Road initiative, India has yeah. its own connectivity plans with the East, uh, East Asian countries, with, with West Asian countries through Shabar. You must have heard about the, uh, these connectivity plans. So how do you think about these connectivity plans? Well, as I said, you know, I, I think uh, each of these countries have their initiatives uh, in the region for their own purpose. Uh, it's important that they... Uh, bring those purpose uh, on the table and uh, discuss with the Pacific Island countries. And to the extent that there is uh, agreement on, uh, on uh, the importance and how those uh, initiatives are enhancing the life and uh, livelihood of Pacific Island countries, I think that's, uh, that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't, uh, we don't think it's, uh, it's a good idea for countries to just come and do their own thing without respecting the rule of law. Mm -hmm and the, uh, the order that currently exists in the Pacific. That means you would like to have connectivity plans which are more inclusive. This is what you want to test? Not only inclusive, but uh, that is uh, based on the decision and the priorities of the countries themselves, mm -hmm. not being imposed by someone. That's an interesting point. Uh, but if you talk about other things as well, um, uh, relationship with India, relationship with China, uh, when it comes to relationship with India, I mean, have you been to India? I have not been. Uh, uh, to India myself. Uh, it's, a, it's a country that I've read about and uh, it's very intriguing. I'd like to visit India. I, I'm sure as a, as a developing uh, country, uh, there is a lot that, can, that they can offer, mm -hmm. that they understand uh, island uh, communities and, uh, and what is needed to further develop our countries. And uh, something you must have heard about India which you liked, I mean, this is a personal question. I mean, maybe Bollywood or maybe music or something which you can tell to our viewers. Uh, yes, I've heard about uh, Bollywood. We've seen uh, a lot of the Bollywood movies that, that are uh, very uh, uh, excellent. Uh, also, your culture is very rich, the Indian, Indian culture. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is a very uh, vibrant, uh, very... Uh, um, diverse and and so i think that's also very intriguing any bollywood movie which you have seen which you can tell us i mean if <laughs> you can be i'm not a very good uh, uh movie goer so i don't remember uh, too 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 many movies but uh, i've seen the bollywood movies and they're 
yeah. they're excellent. Uh -huh. yeah. I hope that they can come and develop some Bollywood movies in the Marshall Islands. Oh, they would love to come to Marshall <laughs> Islands and shoot a lot of uh, movies there. Uh, uh, but ma'am, uh, during the course of the interview, you talked about uh, the, the summits which have happened between India and, and Pacific Island countries and role of the Indian Prime Minister also, uh, he came to Fiji. Uh, how do you see role of Indian Prime Minister in current uh, global order, in current world affairs? Well, I, 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 th I think India is an upcoming country and uh, and the uh, the initiative that India is doing are uh, getting attention uh, from the world. Just recently, I uh, read that India is uh, working on uh, uh, on a healthcare uh, initiative for all. That would be modest. very exciting, you know, if uh, India can uh, have a healthcare system that takes care of uh, everyone in India. It's such a uh, it's just an important uh, initiative, and so. Uh, um, that's something that I'm sure uh, our countries, uh, a lot of the uh, world, different countries are looking to, mm -hmm. to see how that would develop. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for the Marshall Islands, we've been um, talking about possible uh, visit to India, mm -hmm. a state visit to India, and uh, we hope that something like that will, uh, will materialize uh, as uh, we want to further develop uh, the relationship between the Marshall Islands mm -hmm. and India. Tell us uh, something about Marshall Islands, uh, which of course people don't know in India. I mean, this is a country in Pacific Island. Very few Indians might be knowing about this country. Uh, something that when uh, the people in India uh, listen to this interview, get very really surprised. The Marshall Islands is a country, uh, is one of the four atoll nations in the world. All the uh, islands are atoll uh, uh, based. Uh, and um, we have uh, good navigators. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a vibrant culture that is still there and a language that people still use. Mm -hmm. um, where the people there are very friendly. Um, and um, I think it's a, it's a country that when people come, they get to know the people and they like to stay there forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, we invite uh, people to come and visit us. But connectivity is like, I believe, very far. I mean, there, there are no direct flights between India and Marshall Islands. No direct flight, but we have a direct flight between Honolulu and the Marshall Islands. Uh, and uh, also going through the Guam and on to Philippines. Uh, we have flights uh, uh, directly every week. Uh, you know, and so the connectivity is there also down to Australia. So those uh, flights are there and people can go back and forth. I was reading somewhere that there are four or eight people of Indian origin also in your country. I mean, that, that, that will perhaps be the um, uh, s a smallest uh, Indian community anywhere in the world. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I read it uh, in the government papers in India. Uh, yes. th that was an interesting uh, uh, tidbit I got before um, uh, starting this interview. But uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, speaking to Vion on various topics, whether it's connectivity, whether it's climate change, role of India, and how India and Pacific Islands can come closer for, for the betterment of the world. Well, thank you so much, ma'am.